you have a family of people who think they're gonna die young, childhood ends pretty early. There was this one time my dad crushed his toe with a, with a, the, the backhoe on a bobcat, it like destroyed his toe and his, he came home and his toenail was like standing up and he just like ripped it off and like threw it in the trash. Like my dad was like super hardcore. That was also the kind of the, the, the expectation in my household. And so I was, you know, back when I was a kid, they would do colonoscopies and, and they didn't give you anything. Like you were stone cold sober. Um, there was one time I was like 13 years old, I was undergoing the colonoscopy. I was like so, so sober that at some point I told the camera, I told the doctor to give me the camera. I was like, dude, if you can see, I wanna see. So I'm like looking in my own camera. That was just, I mean, that was the kind of, that's, I mean, and that's the stuff I was doing when I was like 13 years old. Um, it was hard, like the stuff that would happen with this disease, I was like, it was after my surgery. I think I was, somewhere around the time I had my surgery, they tested me, they thought I had leukemia, which requires sticking a needle into your tailbone. Again, stone cold sober. So these are the kind of like memories I have when I'm a kid, where just these, these um, medical, tests that back then were seemed barbaric they wouldn't do these to kids to kids 13 14 year olds anymore but that was how i grew up and it but you it sounds brutal but it was just kind of life like that was just normal you know um having fap when i had my surgery that was probably like the hardest part because after i got out of school when i was 15 i had my i had my uh my colon removed i had my colectomy it was a two-step process I had my colectomy had a, uh, an ileostomy for a couple of months. So maybe I should describe how a J pouch works. Um, the surgery's pretty cool. So my, my dad had an ileostomy. So they took out the colon, made a little hole in his abdomen, pulled out the intestine, put a bag on it, right? The way they do, the way that they typically do it now is they take out the colon and they take the, uh, the length of the small intestine at the end and they cut it, so picture this is like a water hose, you cut it, fold it up, sew these sides together, sew these sides together, cut a little notch in the bottom, so now you have a little bag, right? So if you can picture the intestines coming in, it makes kind of like a J, and then you just kind of plumb this back into the to the, the, to the back side, and it's called a J pouch, and it fits kind of next to my bladder. Um, so they made this J pouch, but in between when they, make the J pouch and they open the J pouch out like for use it has to heal. So you have an ileostomy for like two or three months. So I'm with, you know, two open abdominal surgeries in between sophomore and junior year of high school. When I started high school, I was six foot, 160 pounds before my first surgery. I was six foot two, 110 pounds when I went to school uh, my junior year. So like, I, I looked, you know, I was emaciated. Um, and so, yeah, that's like the bleak, hard, shake your head, dear God, what, you know, what is this? But here's the thing, when you grow up thinking that you may die in your thirties, your life is different than everyone else's because there's not a day you waste. Like there's not this like eat Cheetos and watch movies all day, day. Like every day is like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Every day I broke up with my high school girlfriend just like, I told her like you have 80 years to find the person you're gonna that you're gonna fight with. I don't. It's been fun. Like like that was just kind of like the how I live my life. Um, when I met Sean six years ago, I had the exact same talk with her. I have a I have a disease that may take me at any like I may get cancer in five years. I don't know. Um, I live my life hard and fast. It's gonna be fun, but I never take anything for granted. So like that's the positive. Is like I have this vision of what life should be, and I capitalize on it.
Travis Bray. I'm the uh, founder and president of the Hereditary Colon Cancer Foundation. I'm 37 years old. The Hereditary Colon Cancer Foundation, what we're about, we, uh, we support patients. We're a universal advocacy organization. We, we develop patient resources to help them understand their diseases and help them get good care. We, we work with people like Ambry and other great organizations to uh, take education to the professionals so that the patients are getting the care they need. We, we connect patients so that they can draw upon each other, build some strength up, build up a network. You know, there's no reason to experience it alone. And we, most of all, we try and inspire people to get tested early, get screened early, get your genetic testing, get some cameras run through you, make sure that you're healthy, live a healthy life so that you can enjoy this pal. Living with Travis has taught me to um, to enjoy the small things, to make sure that every day counts. Um, he asks, was today a good day? And if the answer is ever no, um, he asks how we can make it better tomorrow. We've learned that people with a hereditary colon cancer syndrome can have an excellent quality of life, but it's really about how they take care of themselves. So. Eating extremely healthy is a big part of our life. Um, we're really conscious of making sure it's balanced in addition to being healthy, so we're proactive in that way. So that's changed our life and my life personally. And the other thing is just the attitude towards life. I think when you live with a disease that makes you feel like your life is shorter, um, you can take it two ways. You can you know, potentially be miserable and let it defeat you, or you can let it inspire you to make the most Fortunately for us, we found out from a doctor named Randall Burt, who is very experienced with hereditary colon cancer syndrome, and we were at a meeting with him, an actual, a business meeting actually, and he said, you know, people with FAP have a normal life expectancy nowadays because of, you know, all the medical advancements, early diagnosis, and good treatment. You can live into your 80s, and I thought Travis was going to fall out of his chair because that was the first time that he had actually ever heard that from anyone and he went from thinking that his life expectancy was probably in early 50s to finding out that he could live to the 80s and he yeah I mean it really it was profound. Right before we started the foundation, I thought I was gonna die. I thought I had six months. I thought I was gonna die at the same age as my granddad and within a year of my dad. I've survived it. I'm, and I'm really good at surviving. And, and anytime I get sick, I have this sense like it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be hell right now, but it's gonna be cool later. You know, you don't get to pick when the storms come. You just gotta fight through them and wait for that sunshine on the other side. And so that's kind of the mentality I have, you know, you don't, you don't get to pick when you're sick. Uh, you know, you ride a motorcycle, you don't get to pick when you go down. That's why you wear a helmet, you know? Um, but that's definitely the outward emotion. That's what I emote, because uh, that's what I want people to see. Um, internally, it's scary. It's, uh, it's frustrating and it's scary. And the only way that I can rationalize the potential to have duodenal cancer in my 50s is that I'm 37 now, and between now and when I have this you know, higher, much higher chance of having duodenal cancer, I'm gonna rock it out.